Welcome to Ubuntu Essence. I am because you are the essence of being human. In service, rekindle the flame of humanity. Hello, my loves. Welcome to another episode of Storytelling Medicine on the Ubuntu Essence podcast. This is your host, Sasha Marie Allen, and I am super excited to share with you my guest for today. Her name is Sophia Lindman. She is a public speaker, a remote work advocate expert, and she has a super inspiring story from the moment she dropped out of school when she was 17 and how she ran a company and co-created her life from there. I hope that her will and tenacity, strength, determination will enchant you as much as it enchanted me. So enjoy. Oh my god, y'all! Yes. <coughs> <laughs> that's so. I don't. Okay. I'm unprepared, and I think that's the best thing to be. Fuck <laughs> yeah! I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what is she gonna ask? <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. This is my beautiful friend, Sophia, and I'm so 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 excited to share her story and her magic with you. I feel that it's going to be so helpful and so inspiring. And thank you, thank you so much for being here. Thank <laughs> you, I'm so happy. I know you're also here in my apartment for the first time. Yes. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you. So I think you already know what I'm gonna ask you, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's your specialty. And I want you to share your story, um, what you do, and yeah, everything, your journey. I feel from the beginning when you started, it was so inspiring. And yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'll leave it to you. Oof. <laughs> um, I was like, should I shoot, do like the long version or the short version? Or um, so I started out let, let me start when I was 15 I was 15 uh, I grew up with um, a mother who had a drug abuse I dropped out of school um, I was the kind of kid that wasn't really supposed to make it like I didn't didn't not really have those like preconditions and and the people around me looked at me and thought oh this is gonna be like it's gonna life is gonna be a struggle for her mm. And uh, yeah, so so I I dropped out of school because I didn't feel like that system was made for me. Or like the way of learning uh, wasn't really made for me. And I had this super naive and super ambitious idea of like wanting to change the world or like wanting to create a positive impact in the world because I was grew up struggling and I know that there's a world full of struggle and a world full of obstacles and pain and suffer but there's also so much magic if people have like if, if we can help people find that that magic that's within them we can create something different for ourselves so I I just had this calling uh, and and especially as a 15 year old people don't really believe you they're like sure but like do it after you like finish high school or like do it after you get a job or because you have to walk like the same path as everyone else does because that's what like success looks like in our society and I just didn't sign up for that idea like I couldn't uh, like the calling was too strong so I decided to take on the music industry and it's particularly the rap scene or the hip-hop scene uh, and I wanted to um, I wouldn't say empower women because women are already empowered I, I, I like to go with 
like helping them find that magic that is already within them because it's already within us. And so I started the world's first rap choir for girls. <laughs> <laughs> and it started out as you know kind of a hobby kind of like a side project and it was at a time where hip-hop is but particularly uh, female rappers were like taking more and more space in sweden they like they were just like it was kind of a hype going on at that time so the timing was so perfect and yeah it, it kind of went quickly from like a side hobby to I got calls from like the biggest record labels in the world like Universal Music wanted to collaborate and Warner Music wanted to collaborate and we got artists like uh, Wu-Tang Clan um, like one of the biggest Swedish rappers uh, that we have in Sweden reaching out wanting to kind of like support so we realized quite quickly that like what well, we can actually I was like, can I make money out of starting rap choirs for girls and like create a positive impact? I was like, of course I can, <laughs> like, of course. Um, so that's what I did for four years, uh, more or less. And it, it was a journey. It was being someone, like running a company, but also running a company wanted to create a positive impact. It's not easy, but it was worth it. And I wanted to create that space for women and girls to be able to grow in their like, musical talent, but also grow uh, spiritually and emotionally and, and you be able to feel more comfortable in their voice and how to use their voice and, and use their voice in order to create change for themselves and for the people around them and for the society that they live in. And music is one of the most powerful tools to create change. It is. It's so freaking powerful if we use it in a good way, in a positive way. Um, so that's kind of how I learned that. Oh, you're not supposed to listen to what anyone else says. Like it doesn't matter if you're 15, if you're 40, if you're 65. Like you have to. Yeah. <laughs> like if I didn't do that for myself, I don't like. I'm scared to look. Like, I'm scared to think about where I would have ended up. Like, if I didn't, like, go on that calling and, like, do it even though I had no idea how to run a company. I had no idea. Like, I didn't know anything about the music industry. But I did it, and I'm so grateful because now I'm so much more comfortable. Like, I know, like, the difference of what I want and what society wants. Mm -hmm. Like, and I can do, like, a differentiation. Like, I know... It's, yeah, my intuition is strong and, and I'm thankful for, for like that journey. Wow, that's, wow, I have no words. <laughs> it's just like, wow, I bow to you, really. Uh, I, I just want to know, like, what, you say you felt that calling inside you. And how, how did you, what was it that you had this belief in yourself? What was it that kept you going with, Whenever, in, even if the external world was telling you the contrary, like what was it? You know, was it something that you did in particular? Was it just how did you follow that intuition? Um, I think back then it was more because I felt like I didn't have a choice because every mm -hmm. every other choice felt miserable. Like going back to school was my other option or like trying to get a job somewhere but I was 15 so it was not like an easy task and, and it's not even legal to hire 15 years old in Sweden so like the other paths that I had as options were not it made me feel horrible so it was not it was like that or nothing and I don't like I think I've always had that within me my mom usually says just like yeah you've always been so freaking stubborn like <laughs> so like you want something and you get it and I think that's yeah it's such a blessing like, you know or I like curse. to call it determination oh yeah <laughs> it's determination for sure that's the best word for it yeah uh, so I think that's kind of like embedded in my DNA. I've always been like that. Uh, mm -hmm. And I know there's definitely a difference of like feeling like, oh, like I want to do this or like I feel like this is the right path to go. And, and taking that step is a completely different thing because most people don't. 
like mm-hmm. it stays as a dream or as a vision yeah. it stays inside of here it doesn't go out in the in the external world and taking that leap is that's when things are like that's the step that we were the most afraid of mm-hmm. um but also with the background that i have i didn't feel like that was like that wasn't worse than what i've been through so like running a company was like fine but like the way i grew up it like it, it, i think it's like it gives you a different perspective on life really yeah. wow well i'm so proud of you mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and t- tell us more about then after those four years um your journey until now and then how did that everything unravel so um yeah after four years i i felt like i I had felt it for a while i there was just something inside of me telling me like it's time to stop like it's time to do something different Uh, i was ready to let that like journey like kind of like end that chapter and start something new and it was definitely like the catalyst for me to be like you know, fly like become that butterfly and like really do my own thing because I proved to myself that I everything is possible um, and while I was running the company I it opened my eyes to the location independent like way of working a different way of working where you don't have to be in a physical office uh, and I've always loved traveling. Like any chance that I could take, I traveled. Like I traveled since I was 15, like on trains to France. And I was in the Sahara Desert alone when I was 17. Like I've done my thing. Uh, took every chance that I got. So like when I quit the company, I was like, I, I want to still have that freedom, especially that geographical freedom. Uh, but then looking at jobs, I was like, this is not, like, they're not there. <laughs> like, their mindset of working is like, you're going to an office or you're working nine to five. Like, it's a completely different, like, I wasn't there. I was like, whoa, shouldn't, like, are we past that? <laughs> you know? Um, so I first, like, initially I was like, okay, like, what, what, what are my options? Should, should, should I, like, go back to running company, a company, but something different? Should I jump on, like, someone else's project? Should I become a freelancer? So I was kind of, like, trying to figure out how I can still live an authentic life and, and have that flexibility and autonomy and ownership over my work days. Like, I don't want to ever wake up and feel like life is meaningless or that I'm living someone else's life. Because that's the kind of thing that when you're I can only speak for myself. I know there's a lot of different types of jobs out there, but signing up for a job means that you're signing up for a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Signing up for a job means like you're, you're you're working at an office at a particular location, which means that you probably have to live close to that location. So you're signing up for maybe a life in the city, and you have to go into like full on into the city life. Like you're, it's the jobs are shaping us, and not the opposite. And, and I think we should like think beyond that because we're living in a different world um so I actually ended up finding (laughs) it's a funny story I found a tech startup like a really small tech startup a young startup based in Sweden uh I found them on Facebook and it was like something I don't know what it was it was something about them that made me interested and intrigued so I emailed the CEO of the company. There were like five people working there at the time. And I emailed the CEO and I was like, hey, like I do, like I've done a lot of PR, like I've run this company. I'm, I, I know a lot about marketing. Like, do you have any like roles available? And he was like, actually, I was just, just thinking about it today. Like we were like, we don't have a marketing department. So like we need a marketing person. Uh, it's like the universe. <laughs> like. <Yeah. laughs> When it flows and when it's easy, it's meant to be. Uh, <laughs> and it was so funny because like, we had we had a few meetings and it was just like a connection there. I was like, this is like I knew it was the right thing to do. And he had the same type of mindset. He was like, like it, it was super. It's funny because he was like, whenever you need something, like just Google it. And I was like, that's what I love because I'm I'm able to be an entrepreneur within a company I don't have to be an entrepreneur in order to like have that like um, 
uh, like really being my creative because that's the thing when you're running a company or that's what I felt sometimes that I, I was so focused on like bringing the money in mm. and I kind of lost that like creative spark and I was able to like have the safety of like having a salary of a month but still be that that creative Pisces that I am mm-hmm. um, so we had a conversation about like that flexibility part and he was like yeah of course like you can work from a cafe here in Stockholm and I was like no like I mean I want to work from a cafe in Kazakhstan like mm-hmm. that's what I mean and he was like okay <laughs> I was like I wasn't prepared to hear that but okay and he was thinking a little bit and he was like sure like let's try like let, let's see what happens uh, so I tried it I left um, Sweden like four years ago I lived in Barcelona before so it was like kind of like a six months back in Sweden and then I bought the cheapest flight ticket I could find and I've like never looked back been on the road for four years this is like the most homey place I've ever had those <laughs> but yeah pretty much lived without like a solid home mm-hmm. That's so epic. And yeah, just tell us more about how you went into the speaking and yeah, all of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started pub- like with public speaking when I was around 17, 18. Um, I worked briefly for a social entrepreneur in Sweden. I was his assistant. Uh, it was a very interesting job that I had. And he was one of the most successful public speakers in Sweden. And he had an opportunity to go on a national tour to speak towards like 10,000 young people about uh, uh, both like the environmental, like sustainability and social sustainability. And uh, they needed a kind of like a sidekick or like someone who was like speaking besides him. He was still like the main guy. <laughs> and uh, we, yeah, we had a, this working relationship and he was like, have you ever done public speaking before? Mm-hmm. And it was also funny speaking of like timing and the universe and all of that. Cause I had like a pivotal moment, like before I went to bed, just like a week before he asked. And I had this like urge to share my story because I felt like that was like in the middle of my entrepreneurial entrepreneurial journey, and I was like, I wish, like, the story that I like, the, the things that I'm going through, I wish I knew that it was possible in moments when I didn't think it was possible. Like, I wish someone told me what I'm going through right now mm-hmm. that like you can make it happen even though it feels like you're a failure. Especially when society label you as a failure, even though you're not. Um, and then a week after, he asked me um, if I wanted to do, like, if I wanted to be on stage with him and speak. And I was like, hell yeah! Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was like, but how? <laughs> like, how does it work? How do? How does <laughs> like? <laughs> um, so it was uh, It wasn't like actually. It wasn't as easy as like he asked, and then I got the part. It was I got long process and it was a lot of people involved and a lot of people did not want me to do it because they were like we have a lot of more like we have way more successful people that are you know experienced public speakers they know what they're doing and now we have this like teenager who's running this weird rap choir thing like yeah Uh, but I ended up getting it so that was like the kickstart of my public speaking career and I was on stages all around Sweden. I spoke at the government. I spoke for the royal family. And I like I got it was like a very intense six months of like a it was like a public speaking boot camp. And it was like from like high schools to the government pretty much. So like a really intense journey. And yeah, that's when I fell in love with public speaking because I've been like if we're going into astrology, I'm a moon Leo. And Amu Leo is very passionate and loves to be the center of attention, but only when she's very passionate. When she feels like you have something important and meaningful to share, that's when she loves to be on stage. So, like, stage for me and, like, 
uh, delivering and the message that can can help people mm. was something that I felt like oh this is so right it's so right um, so that's how we started and um, I got a lot of requests like after that national tour mm. and at one point I like I remember a particular moment because I was on a stage and uh, this was like a huge conference in Sweden with like 600 people in the audience and I was maybe like 18 19 at the time mm. uh, and I remember I had a lot of anxiety like during those like the days before I didn't feel great uh, I was struggling with my mental health at the time and I remember not wanting to do it but like I already signed a contract like I was one of the main speakers I didn't feel like I could back out so even though I felt that like crumbling horrible like anxiety feeling in my body I had to go on stage and I went on that stage and I made in my head at that time it was like a horrible um, I felt like I did a horrible job like I lost what I was supposed to say, I didn't feel engaged with the audience, I didn't feel like the message came through, and I was just like, I was in a different world. But in my head, that experience, or like that gig that I did was like one of the most horrible things I've ever done. Like I felt like I was a failure, and I was kind of like shitting my pants in front of 600 people, and now 600 people are literally watching me live, like seeing this failure live. And I think that's like a biological thing. It's like speaking is scary. It's so vulnerable. And when you feel like you mess up in front of an audience, it's not like it's not a nice feeling. And especially being that young, because mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know myself. I didn't, you know, I was going through my own things. And after that, I didn't do speaking for many years. Like I just stopped. Like I didn't say yes to anything after that because uh, I labeled myself as a failure because I was like mm -hmm. yeah it was just uh, like a mini traumatic experience on stage that I had mm -hmm. uh, and yeah it took many years like I ended a company I started my digital nomad journey and uh, when I started traveling and like working for this tech startup I a lot of people became like interested in, in the way that I was living because it was unconventional and it was different so I kind of started to get some requests again of like oh like how is it to be a digital nomad and how can you uh, can you help our company uh, maybe shift from like an office to more of a hybrid model or like a more of like a remote mo model a remote way of working and uh, I was like, no, I'm not gonna, like, I'm not gonna say yes to anything because I was like, I'm a failure. I can't speak uh, because of that one experience that I had that I failed. Um, and at one point, it was so funny. Again, I got a DM uh, on uh, Instagram from a girl who was like, hi, like I. Uh, like we're having a, this event in a few months um like i know that you ran this rap choir thing so interesting like would you want to speak a little more about it like she didn't say what it was she didn't say like anything like she didn't give me any context just like there's a stage and we want you to speak and i was like oh okay <laughs> i was like what is this and i was also going to bali so i was like it's not like really the right time for it but I ended up go, jumping on that call with her and she was like, oh yeah, um, it's actually TEDx, like where I'm the organizer for TEDx in Stockholm. And I was, yeah, I was like, okay, I was like, oh shit. Uh, I was like, can you tell me more? <laughs> I am listening. I am listening. <laughs> Forget what I said. I was like, I'm all ears. <laughs> So she told me a little bit about it. Then they had a theme for the year. This was just before the pandemic. And uh, yeah, she was like, everything went so fast. She was like, do you want to speak there? <laughs> like, well, what do you want to speak about? And I was like, I wasn't sure. I was like, she asked like, am I have to go through a process? Are we, like, I was just confused. Um, but uh, I 
felt like it was important to share like the rap choir journey, like the journey of being a social entrepreneur as a female and, and with my background and uh, it, they ended up liking that idea and the morning after I was one of the speakers, um, which was um, yeah, a hell of a journey and, and not only the fact that like I spoke at TEDx because it's on one hand I can feel like it's quite superficial because it's still a stage like it's still people and oh, like it's not anything different from what I've done it's just a logo that attracts a lot of eyes um, but more so it was a internal journey and spiritual journey because I had to face that limited belief I had about being a failure at speaking or like I'm a shitty speaker and and I was like am I gonna embarrass myself on a TEDx like there's one thing about like mm-hmm. a conference like no one cares about that conference but mm-hmm. embarrassing myself on a TEDx stage that's gonna be live on YouTube and everyone's gonna be able to watch it whenever someone googles my name they're gonna like that gonna pop up and I was like mm-hmm. I really have to face that fear if I'm gonna do because I want to be like the most shiny the most mm-hmm. radiant self when I mm-hmm. walk on that stage uh, so I I was hesitant at first because I was like do I want to do it do I don't want to do it should I do it and then I was like fuck yeah like I'm not gonna mm-hmm. and also like that mindset of the 15 year old me it was like no I'm not gonna let, let that stop me mm-hmm. even if it was a belief that I had and not like external people I didn't want to let that ruin that opportunity for me so I hired a mindset coach a speaking coach like I had a little team around me and I was like mm-hmm help me because <laughs> sometimes you have to ask for help it's uh, you, yes. you, you 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 have the tools to help yourself but but having that support from other people is it's also crucial. important yeah crucial um so yeah we worked more on the limiting belief than like the actual speech because that was like my like trigger points and uh two months later i was back in stockholm and i was just just about to walk up on that stage and I felt so freaking good (laughs) I felt like (laughs) like I put in so much hard work and I spoke for free on so many venues before because I was like practice 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 because I don't want to like Ted to be like the first time I go on stage after like seven years of not doing it Um, so I was practicing 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 I did a lot of speaking in Asia uh, I did a lot of speaking when I got back to, to Stockholm before Ted, and so I was like, I was like warm, warmed up, and I was ready, and I walked on that stage, and I was like, I own it. Camera decided to stop, and well, now I'm gonna continue. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? <laughs> wow. Um, I, I actually don't know what to tell you besides like what an honor to, to witness you and to witness your journey and to be in the same space as you. I feel like so many people will benefit from your story and to end this I just want you to send a message to whoever's out there and they were maybe in the same situation as you. Uh, or they going through something similar where they need to take the leap and they just in this fear-based um, place what right. what is your your recommendation what is your advice Oof. Um, first of all I think it's important to that's something that I needed to hear when I was like in the beginning of my journey was no one can define you but you like people can throw these labels at you and think that you're something because you did this or because you look like that or you got the best grades or the worst grades or you didn't fit in here or you fitted in here um that's nothing no one can define you but you and especially when it comes to your self-worth and being a woman (laughs) being you know someone who wants something different out of the a world that can be so ordinary <laughs> like we have one path and that's the only path that we're supposed to walk on mm. in order to kind of attain that success what is success even like we're actually able to own what success means like we're, we're in 2022 
we are the whole freaking buffet and we can own that. Mm. I love, I love that. that. <laughs> we are the whole freaking buffet. We are buffet. the whole freaking buffet. <laughs> so <Ooh>. come at us. <laughs> Wow, what a way to end this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, thank you for having me. I love you. you oh. So tell me when people, uh, where people can find you, if someone wants to work with you, like how is the whole process? Right. Uh, so you can find me on Instagram, uh, Lindemann Sophia. So it's like my last name and my first name. Uh, you can find my website if you want to have some kind of coloration or speaking requests. And then you can find me on Sophia Lindman. Uh, I was like, Sophia Lindman. Dot com. I was like, thank you for. Uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, and you can find my email there as well. So, uh, yeah, like, you're more than welcome to, to uh, reach out if you have any questions or want to talk or, or have any, anything on your mind. Mm. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a nice conversation. Yeah. <laughs> wow, thank you. <laughs> so powerful. Really. It's so powerful. <laughs> My loves, I hope that you leave this conversation with a positive action to put your dreams into manifestation, into reality, and that you know that everything is possible when you surrender and you trust the divine guidance within you. See you in the next episode. Much love.